All right, let's get right into it. Your assigned problems may or may not have different randomized values. For best results, attempt the assignment on your own before watching these solutions. Students are encouraged to frequently pause the video to work out steps on their own before proceeding with the solutions. And here's the list of topics to be covered in this video. In problem one, we'll compute the exact value of sine squared of 75 degrees plus cos squared of 75 degrees minus sine of 25 degrees divided by cosine of 65 degrees. Now we really only need to make two observations to complete this problem. First, sine squared x plus cos squared x equals one for any angle x. This is called the Pythagorean identity. Just be sure you have the same angle in both of these terms. Sine squared of one angle plus cos squared of the same angle can always be equal to one. So sine squared of 75 degrees plus cos squared of 75 degrees is equal to one. Also, there are two different identities that will essentially mean the same thing. Sine of x equals cos of pi over two minus x or cos of x equals sine of pi over two minus x. If we convert these to degrees, sine of x degrees equals cosine of 90 degrees minus x degrees or the cosine of x degrees equals the sine of 90 degrees minus x degrees. 25 plus 65 is 90, so the sine of 25 degrees equals the cosine of 90 degrees minus 25 degrees, which is 65 degrees. So that ratio sine of 25 degrees over cos of 65 degrees is equal to one. Altogether, we then have a one minus one, so this is exactly equal to zero. In problem two, let's compute the exact value of the sine of 345 degrees. Now this angle is coterminal with negative 15 degrees. So instead, I'm just gonna compute the sine of negative 15 degrees. Negative 15 degrees is half of one of our reference angles of negative 30 degrees, so we'll use a half angle formula. The sine of x over two is plus or minus the square root of one minus the cosine of x all over two. Negative 15 degrees is in quadrant four, so the sine will be negative. So we take the negative square root here. Sine of negative 15 degrees is minus the square root of one minus the cosine of negative 30 degrees all over two. The cosine of negative 30 degrees is root three over two, and this simplifies down to negative square root of two minus root three all over two. Next, let's compute the exact value of the tangent of negative 75 degrees. The tangent function is odd. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor this minus sign out. So instead, let's compute minus sine of 75 degrees over cos of 75 degrees, because 75 degrees can be decomposed into the sum of two reference angles, 45 degrees plus 30 degrees. So we can use the sum formula for sine and cosine. There is a sum formula for the tangent function, but I never remember it and I have to look it up. And I didn't want to do that right now. So instead of looking at the formula for tangent, we're just going to do sine and cosine separately. So the tangent of negative 75 degrees, we've already expressed as negative sine of 75 degrees over cos of 75 degrees. Both of those 75 degrees, I'm going to decompose as 45 plus 30 so that we can use the sum formulas. We have negative in the numerator, sine of 45 degrees cos of 30 degrees plus sine of 30 degrees cos of 45 degrees. This is using the sum formula for sine. And in the denominator, we'll use the sum formula for cosine. So that cosine of 45 degrees plus 30 degrees becomes cosine of 45 degrees, cosine of 30 degrees minus sine of 45 degrees, sine of 30 degrees. All of these are known values. So if we plug them in and hack through all the algebra, this simplifies to simply negative the quantity two plus root three. For problem four, let's rewrite the sine of x plus pi over four in terms of both sine and cosine of just x. Now this is really quite straightforward. We just need to use the sum formula for sine. So the sine of x plus pi over four is sine x cos pi over four plus cos x sine pi over four. Cosine and sine of pi over four are both root two over two, which can be factored out. So there we have it. We've rewritten sine of x plus pi over four with just a sine x and a cos x. In problem five, if the sine of x is three fourths and x is known to be in quadrant one, we'll find the exact value of three expressions, sine of two x, cos of two x, and tan of two x. Now sine of x is three fourths, so we can solve for the cosine of x. The Pythagorean identity, sine squared x plus cos squared x equals one. Well, since the sine of x is three fourths, the square of that is nine sixteenths. This allows us to solve that cos of x is plus or minus root seven over four. But since we know x is in quadrant one, cosine must be positive. So the cosine of x is root seven over four. Now various double angle identities are really all we need to complete the problem. So the sine of two x is two times the sine of x cos of x. The sine of x was known to be three fourths and we've solved that the cos of x is root seven over four. This simplifies down to three root seven over eight. Next, the cos of two x is cos squared x minus sine squared x. Well, 
since we solved that cos of x is root 7 over 4, its square is 7 sixteenths, and since the sine of x is 3 fourths, its square is 9 sixteenths, and 7 sixteenths minus 9 sixteenths is negative 2 sixteenths, or minus 1 eighth. And finally, the tangent of 2x is really just the sine of 2x over cos of 2x. We've solved for both of these, 3 root 7 over 8 over negative 1 eighths. The eighths cancel, and we simply get negative 3 root 7. In problem six, let's solve each expression for the value of the unknown angle. So we really just need for both of these the double angle formula. Cos of 2x is equal to cos squared x minus sine squared x. In other words, if we replace y with 2x, we get cos of y equals cos squared y over 2 minus sine squared y over 2. So in the first, if I set 36 degrees to be a degrees over 2, we have cos squared a over 2 minus sine squared a over 2 equals cos a. So a is 72 degrees. And in the second part, if we set 8x to be b over 2, we get cos squared b over 2 minus sine squared b over 2. And according to the identity we figured out on the right side of the screen, that is just cosine of b, which is 16x. Next, let's apply the half angle formula to solve for what a, b, and c should be, assuming that cos squared of 2x is a plus b times the cosine of c. Now the half angle formula for cosine is typically written like this. Cosine of something over two is equal to plus or minus the square root of one plus the cosine of that thing all over two. If we square both sides, we get cos squared of y over two equals one plus cos y over two. So now let's let y over 2 equal 2x, because that is what our expression has, cos squared of what? Cos squared of 2x. In the half angle formula, we have derived a cos squared of y over 2, so let's set y over 2 equal to 2x. In other words, y is equal to 4x. So we get cos squared of 2x is equal to 1 plus the cosine of 4x over 2, and if you distribute that denominator, we get 1 half plus 1 half cos of 4x. In other words, a and b are both 1 half, and c is 4x. In problem 8, if the cosecant of x is equal to 8, and x is between 90 and 180 degrees, then we will solve for each of the sine, cosine, and tangent of x over 2. Now, we're in quadrant 2, we're between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, and the sine of x is an eighth. So, well, let's use the Pythagorean identity, put in our known value for the sine of x, solve for the cos of x is plus or minus root 63 over 8, but we're in quadrant two, so cosine is negative. So we pick negative root 63 over eight, which simplifies slightly to minus three root seven over eight. Also, since x is between 90 and 180 degrees, x over two is between 45 and 90 degrees. In other words, x over two is definitely in quadrant one. So all of our answers, sine, cosine, and tangent of x over two, if we're given an option between a positive and a negative, because x over two is now known to be in quadrant one, we will pick the positive. So we just need to hack through the various half angle formulas. Sine of x over two is plus or minus root of one minus cos x over two. We know we're in quadrant one, so pick the positive, and we know the cosine of x is negative three root seven over eight. Similarly, the half angle formula for cosine of x over two, plus or minus the square root of one plus cos x over two. We're in quadrant one, so pick the positive, and we know the cosine of x is negative three root seven over eight. And for the tangent of x over two, we can use the half angle formula, plus or minus square root, one minus cos x over one plus cos x. We pick the positive because we're in quadrant one, and we have already found that the cosine of x is negative three root seven over eight. All of these could be simplified algebraically if necessary, if your instructor requires it, but the trigonometry part is done. In problem nine, if we assume the sine of pi over 12 is one half the square root of a minus root b, then find the correct values for a and b. So pi over 12 is half of the reference angle pi over six. So let's use the half angle formula for sine. Sine of pi over 12 will be plus or minus the square root of one minus the cosine of pi over six over two. Pi over 12 is definitely in quadrant one, so we use the positive root. And we also know the cosine of pi over six is root three over two. So sine of pi over 12 is the square root of one minus root three over two all over two. All we have to do now is perform some algebra to get the correct values of a and b by making it look like that sort of expression. So giving the one in that numerator under the radical representing it as two over two, we would end up with two minus root three over two over two or two minus root three over four. We split that up and bring out the root four as a one over two and we have one half times the square root of two minus root three. In other words, a is two and b is three. We've already made it look like the expression we wanted.
Last, in problem 10, if the tangent of x is 5 sevenths and x is known to be in quadrant 1, let's find the tangent of 2x. So the tangent of 2x will simply be the sine of 2x over the cos of 2x. The sine of 2x is 2 sine x cos x, and cos of 2x is cos squared x minus sine squared x. In other words, all we really need to do is find the values of sine x and cos x, and we'll be able to compute this tangent of 2x. So we know we're in quadrant 1, so sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent will all be positive. Let's start with a modified Pythagorean identity, tan squared x plus 1 is equal to secant squared x, because we know that tangent was 5 over 7, so squaring that gives us 25 over 49. This allows us to solve that the secant of x is plus or minus root 74 over 7, but we are in quadrant 1, so we pick the positive square root. If the secant is root 74 over 7, then cosine is 7 over root 74, and I'm not going to simplify this algebraically until the very end. Now we could use a Pythagorean identity now if we know cosine to solve for sine, but there's actually a much easier way to get the value of sine. Tangent is sine over cosine. In other words, sine is cosine times tangent. We know the cosine, it's 7 over root 74, and we were given the tangent, it's 5 over 7. The 7's cancel, this is 5 over root 74. So we're going to be using the identity tan of 2x is 2 sine x cos x over cos squared x minus sine squared x. We've now computed that the cosine of x is 7 over root 74, and that the sine of x is 5 over root 74. So it's really just a matter of plugging and chugging. 2 times sine x times cos x over cos squared x minus sine squared x. In the numerator, we have 2 times 5 times 7 over 74, and in the denominator, 49 minus 25 over 74. The 74s cancel, and we simplify this to 35 over 12.